Good morning. Welcome to First Christian Reformed Church this fall morning. It's brisk fall air outside as we come to God's house to worship him. Uh, We welcome you. And if you're joining us online today, we welcome you. May the Lord be praised and his people be blessed wherever we may be. And a couple of announcements is uh, cell group will be meeting this Thursday so if you're involved with that I put the lesson in the boxes so uh, you know what we'll be uh, studying also um, we are going to be starting our Operation Christmas Child Drive soon Um, we have the boxes we're awaiting the um, the labels and they're on the way. Uh, they should be arriving in a week or so. And when that happens, we'll uh, launch another year of helping children, really in all different places in this world, uh, know the truth about Christmas. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we come into this place and we have a source for what is needed. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And he made the heavens. He made the earth. And let's stand and receive the greeting that comes from God, who is filled with grace for his people. Grace to you and peace. These are from God, who is our Father in Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, and through the work of God in his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, sing praise to the Lord. Uh, We have a few songs that we're going to be singing in praise to the Lord. And the first one is, My Jesus, I Love Thee. And this was a request uh, a couple weeks back. And uh, we're glad to uh, play those. And if you have a faith that you would like us to sing sometime, please let me know. I can't promise that we'll be able to sing it, but we'll try if we can. And um, so our first hymn is, My Jesus, I Love Thee, I Know Thou Art Mine.
Praise God. As we get ready for communion next Sunday and thinking about what Jesus has done, uh, praise to him. And our next hymn also is in that light, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. And uh, we'll remain standing and sing uh, verses 1 to 3. Let's greet one another. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning, Mary Jean. Did I miss something that you wanted to ask me? Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day of life and worship. And Lord, it's good that we can be here. We pray that you'll bless us and that you will help each one of us today with the needs that we may have, whether they are spiritual needs, whether we have physical needs, whether they are mental needs, that you will be a God of blessing for us, your people. And may we then turn and bring praise to you with all that you give us and all that we are. In Jesus' name, amen. We respond in praising the Lord again in song, and the hymn is, There's a Redeemer, and that's Jesus Christ, the Lord. There is a Redeemer. Let's remain seated, but we'll sing together.
thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son. And next Sunday, with the Lord's blessing, we'll celebrate it together that we have a Savior who died for us on the cross. And uh, we get ready for that. And that's part of God's goodness to us as he, he gives us time to prepare for things. And this is something that he gives to us this week as we get ready for the Lord's Supper. And there is a special litany that we use this morning that's intended to set our minds thinking the right things as we get ready for next week. As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, let's remember, Scripture calls us to examine ourselves before God. We're taught eating and drinking unworthily brings judgment on ourselves. Let's therefore ask God for the proper spirit in which to celebrate the sacrament. Almighty God, before whom can be neither secret thought nor hidden deed, grant us your spirit that we may know our hearts, our lives, and our inmost thoughts as you know them. Grant us your grace that we may repent sincerely of all sin. Find peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ and grow in assurance of salvation in him. May the celebration of our Savior's infinite love in his redeeming death bring joy to us and glory to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the atoning power of our Savior's death and for our share in his victory over sin. Open our hearts as we prepare for this celebration that it may strengthen us in our faith, establish us in our hope, and confirm us in our love. In his name, amen. Brothers and sisters, let's first examine our faith. We all confess the truth of God as taught by Scripture and summarized in the creeds of the church. And by this faith, we take to ourselves Christ and all his benefits so that for us to live is Christ. Lord God, author and finisher of all true believing, confirm our faith as we prepare for the Holy Sacrament. Let us further examine our hope. All Christian hope rests on the finished work of Christ as Savior. The Holy Gospel teaches all our righteousness is in him alone. God's children rely wholly on the merits of Christ, find in him their strength and victory, and confidently re expect his return in glory. They look forward to celebrating this holy supper anew with him in the kingdom, and they'll surely be received by God at his table. Most merciful Father, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Let us also examine our love both for God and our neighbors. Remember the great and first commandment. Love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let's consciously determine to live a life of loving service to him through Christ our Lord. Let's also search ourselves to determine whether we love our neighbors as Christ commands. Do we unselfishly live for the welfare of others? Do our lives reflect the godly virtues of obedience, fidelity, integrity, justice, humility, and contentment? Do we seek reconciliation with our neighbors in all cases of offense? Dear Father, daily increase in us the greatest gift of all, our Christian love. And if these marks of spiritual life aren't evident in us, we may not presume to approach his table. Those, therefore, who live in self-righteousness, who hope in works, are virtues of their own, and who don't show love to God and neighbor, have no true place at the Lord's Supper. Yet, we should not be deterred by any sin lingering within against our will. As we find faith, hope, and love within us, we ought 
gladly to obey our Lord's command and come with full expectation to God's open house of mercy. Gracious God, we love and adore you. In Christ our Lord, we thank you for reconciling us to yourself in him. We rejoice in being received as your children. Prepare us by your Holy Spirit for the sacrament. Help us to come in the assurance that by it we shall be spiritually revived and strengthened in faith, hope, and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, and as we continue our worship to our God of, uh, who has saved us in Christ, uh, we continue in prayer. And this morning we'll pray, and I'll also leave some opportunity of silence for you to silently pray for various needs and things that uh, I'll introduce to. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord our God, the fields around us are ripe unto harvest. We thank you for the corn and the beans in those fields. Some fields have already been cleared, and we ask that the harvest will be a good one. O oh Lord, your church is involved in a harvest of sorts too, and the harvest of lives for Jesus Christ. And we pray for those who are believers that we may grow in Christ, but also for those who do not know Jesus, that we may bear fruitful witness in a world of need. Lord, for the church, for the leaders of the church, we're grateful that they could meet this past week. Thank you for the elders and the deacons. Bless them with wisdom as they serve. Bless those who will be asked to consider serving in the next uh, terms. We pray for uh, the leaders in our church. Lord, we lift up some other needs as well. We know that there are uh, those in our church who have special needs, uh, that Arnold Naderhoff moved to uh, the Arlington Living Center in Grundy Center this past week. Bless him and be with him as he adjusts to uh, his new uh, place and uh, be with his family too, with the things that that involves. Uh, we pray for those who... Uh, are beginning new jobs recently, that you will bless them richly as they learn and function in a new way, uh, provide for needs and bless. We pray for those who are undergoing medical treatments for different conditions. May those treatments be successful and may there be flourishing in health and well-being. We pray for those who are healing from surgery, and we're grateful that Daryl Fries can be with us this morning. Please continue to be with him as he heals and goes to therapy, and be with all who have special medical needs, O oh Lord. Lord, for the causes of the kingdom, we lift up uh, the needs that exist. We pray for the offering cause today, for the Thrive Ministry in the Christian Reformed Church that seeks to help those who have disabilities to be fully integrated and involved in church and ministry and kingdom. 
uh, bless the ministry that has received the offerings for today. Uh, we ask that you also bless our missionaries in the fields, uh, the Vandevorts, uh, be with them, um, the Ribbons, that you will be with them, the Van Zeusts, uh, bless them. We pray for uh, the missionaries that are uh, doing their work in Uganda, and thank you that Bill could go and serve there for a time. Uh, be with them as uh, we uh, provide some Sunday school materials. Please bless the materials to be put to good use and may your kingdom come. In all these ways, uh, we look to you, dear Lord, and we know you are good. You're the God of so much good, so much blessing, and uh, we pray that you will be with us, your people, in this world of need. And may the, the harvest uh, be one that is rich and a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. For a thousand tongues to sing. Uh, when I was small, I tried to visualize that, and uh, now I know it's a poetic thing. And now we're just going to sing it. A thousand tongues that we could sing uh, the great Redeemer's praise. Let's stand and sing. ask God's blessing in prayer. Lord, as we uh, go into the time when we share your word, may the, t may the, the tongue that speaks uh, sing your grace, and may we hear it and apply it fruitfully and helpfully in the Christian life. In Jesus' name, amen. And I uh, request the children to come forward for our children's moment. You guys see what I brought with me today? You know what this is, I bet. What is it? It's like um, a part of a corn. Yes, it is. It's a part of a corn. And there's a lot of these in the fields. And do you guys know what farmers use to get the corn? It's a big machine and they... Yes, Logan knows. It's a combine. And I'm amazed at combines, that they can go through the field and take the corn and separate the stuff that we don't want and then keep the good. And I thought, this is kind of cool, and maybe I'll let you guys pretend that you're a combine, and can you guys separate some of the, the bad off of that? We'll see if we can get to the good. Yep, you're getting there, Daniel. All right, good. Hogan's up. All right. Kind of stubborn. It's like my sunflowers yesterday. I was pulling them in the garden. That's why I'm walking a little funny today. They <laughs> did a little something to my back. We're going to apologize to our janitor in advance. <laughs> the 
we're doing so good. We're almost there. All right. There it is. It's gold. Maybe not actual gold, but it looks good. Yes, Logan, you said it. Combines go faster than that. Probably in that time we would have done a few hundred or maybe more. I don't know. <laughs> but the reason I brought that today is I was thinking about what God does in my life and how there's something that's bad that he takes away. And it has three letters, and it begins with S. Can anybody think of it? Sin. Sin. And God takes that away when Jesus died on the cross for my sins. It's kind of like, kind of like a combine. Daniel, if you want, I'll show you something else with it here. God can take away what, what's bad and bring about something good. And that's what Jesus does in my life. And he continues to do that in my life. And it takes time to uh, get where I need to be. But I'm just glad that uh, God prepares me for... Um, for the harvest and that he's at work in my life and uh, I'll have to give this back to the farmer because I took this out of his field today <laughs> let's have a prayer Lord um, for the harvest around us we pray that you'll bless it thank you for the machines that take what isn't what we want and separate it from the good and uh, in a spiritual way thank you that in Jesus sins can be taken away from us that bad habits or uh, thoughts or words or deeds that don't glorify you uh, can be forgiven and that you can work in us to make us pleasing in your sight and thank you for all the time that you put into that all through our life and that you're at with each of us all through our lives bless our kids thank you for them and and do the work in their lives too in Jesus we ask, amen. All right, I'm not going to give you corn for um, your snack, though. So here you go. You can have a little something on your way. And uh, we'll see you. Well, if you want, you can... Yes, I know there's one there. Thanks for getting that. All right, the um, Bible passage that we're looking to today, we continue our um, going through the last prophet in the Old Testament, uh, Malachi, and the verses are verse 17 of chapter 2 to verse 5 of chapter 3, and the title is The Patient Purifier. The uh, scripture reading begins at verse 17 with, You've wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him, you ask? By saying, All who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord. And he's pleased with them. Or, Where's the God of justice? I'll send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. 
and the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. So I'll come uh, to put you on trial. I'll be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners among you of justice, but do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. And that's as far as we read from uh, the word. I'd like also to share a portion of the uh, Heidelberg Catechism. It's a portion that explains the various parts and petitions of the Lord's Prayer. And the sixth petition, and it asks, what does it mean? Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one means by ourselves we're too weak to hold our own even for a moment. And our sworn enemies, the devil, the world, and our own flesh never stop attacking us. And so, Lord, uphold us and make us strong with the strength of your Holy Spirit so that we may not go down to defeat in this spiritual struggle but may firmly resist our enemies till we finally win the complete victory. As we uh, read our text, this uh, book of Malachi uh, has a structure to it, and very often there's questions and that are then addressed. And the questions that start this passage all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord. Is that right? That God's eyesight uh, isn't accurate in this world? That all who do evil are good in his sight? Where is the God of justice? Is another one, one of the questions that's referenced in the first part of our passage. Where is the God of, of justice? We might ask, what would bring somebody to ask that? And I can imagine looking out in the world and seeing someone who is doing evil and getting away with it. And if you haven't read Night Riders of Hardin County, I would recommend it. Um, because it's for much of the book seeming as though the bad guy gets away with everything. Uh, it's a historical fiction book about events that happened quite a long time ago, but quite nearby to us in Steamboat Rock, and how there was an organized crime ring, really, that... Uh, they, were, they stole horses, they made counterfeit coins, and the, the leader, sometimes called Black Bill, although nobody dared to say that to his face, um, seems to get away with everything, including murder. And the blame for a lot of these activities went to people who really didn't deserve the blame for them and even were imprisoned for a long time for them. And when we see those sorts of things happening and as we, as we read about them in this book, something in the heart says, no, where is God in all this? Where is justice? Where is justice when you need it? And thankfully, at the end of the book, uh, the Rainsbargers are, are exonerated. Uh, they're pardoned officially, even from the governor of the state of Iowa. And they are freed. And uh, it's there that, as I was reading, that my soul has a picture of redemption, of being freed and uh, being able to live again. 
It's a good book. And I wondered if some of what was going on in my mind as I read is happening in the lives of God's people in Malachi's day as they look out in the world and see an awful lot of evil going on. I mean, as we read the passage, uh, there's a lot of different things that were listed there, wasn't it? Sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers, those defrauding laborers of their wages, those oppressing widows and orphans, those depriving foreigners among the people of justice. And in the original text, uh, all of these things are in participle form. Say, so what is the significance of that? It's, it's that these things aren't just one-time problems. They are ongoing. They continued to be done in the land. And yet, the questions that arose in our text All who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord, and he's pleased with them, or where is the God of justice? Those questions that were being asked were described by the prophet Malachi as things that wearied the Lord. Why? Why did they weary him? We read God's promise, I will send my messenger. I will send my messenger. Where is the God of justice? I will send my Malachi. Malachi, the name means my messenger. And God sends messengers. A messenger in the Old Testament is sometimes thought of in the light of prophet or priest somebody who was sent to God's people. In the case of a priest, somebody who's called to help God's people uh, turn to the Lord again. And in the case of a prophet, too, somebody who brings the words of the Lord and calls people uh, to the Lord again. I will send my messenger, and God had sent messengers through the years. We think of uh, the great prophets that came you know, and Isaiah, Jeremiah. Um, but I was uh, getting ready for cell group this week, and uh, R.C. Spool says, don't forget John the Baptist. He's, he's a messenger. And indeed, he most certainly is. Because when we look at the way that the New Testament understands these words from Malachi, it sees a great fulfillment of a God who sends his messenger in the great prophet John the Baptist. I send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. So what's God's response to all this sin that's going on? Well, it's, it's actually twofold. It starts with John, and we're going to see that God's grace is there, that it's good of God to send John first, that John could prepare the way, that he didn't just send Jesus without sending John. In his good wisdom, he says, I'll send my messenger who will prepare the way before me, and then suddenly the one you seek will come to his temple. Jesus is going to be there. And that's really how the New Testament understands these words in Malachi. The prophet John in his ministry, uh, in um, Matthew uh, 11, Jesus is saying to the people, and a lot of them had heard John and went out to see John, what did you go out to see, Jesus asked them. A prophet? A, a Malachi? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it's written, I'll send my messenger ahead of you who's going to prepare your way before you. 
Oh, that was exciting because it was a long, long time in the meantime that people longed for the coming of the Messiah. And now Jesus says, the, the messenger who is preparing the way came. And the excitement level of having Jesus there. It's good that God brought John first because John prepares the way. And how does he prepare the way? Well, John doesn't mince words. He gives the message that God gave him to give. Called for repentance. And was quite pointed about it. He knew that some of the Jews relied on a false sense of security. Uh, it was enough that they could say, Abraham is our father. No. Uh, John's ministry uh, tried to strip that insecurity that uh, false sense of security away from them and help them see they needed to repent too. They needed to help others in need. They needed to resist the inbuilt tendency to be selfish. They needed to refrain from actions that hurt others. They needed to be content. And if they heeded those words, they would be better prepared for when Jesus came to continue on the right way. The Gospel of Mark also sees John and Jesus as fulfilling the words of Malachi. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, another Malachi, I will send my messenger, my Malachi, ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, because he's going to come to his people. And he's going to lead us in the way of salvation. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, John, the Malachi who was to come, says, I baptize you with water, one who is more powerful than I is coming. The thongs of whose sandals I'm not even worthy to untie. I'm not even worthy to do the most menial of things for him. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He'll baptize you with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. Think again of that you know, ear of corn and the separation and the bringing of what's good out of that. He'll gather the wheat into his barn and he'll burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. When Jesus comes, he is going to refine and purify. And Jesus was there and bringing those things. And in many ways, he still is refining. He's still purifying. And it's uh, inspiring to read how Malachi pictures this like gold, like silver. There's good there that's coming. He will sit and refine them with a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He'll purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. There's, there's good there, but he's got to do some work to get to it. I watched a video last week on refining silver, and when they were in those days, they did it differently than we do in our day. Uh, it involved you know, melting the impurities away. Uh, today, many times, those who refine silver use chemicals, uh, an acid that takes the silver away, and then another uh, substance that uh, brings the silver back out in a purity. Uh, and, and Mexico is actually one of the, world, the, the world's leading miner of silver. And think of the process and the difficulty of the process of getting something pure 
from what is a mixture. But that pales in comparison to what Jesus did to purify you and me. He went all the way to death on a cross. And there our sins were laid on him, uh, taken off of us and put onto him. And he paid for them there. And then three days later, the process of salvation involved Jesus being raised, raised from the dead, raised to new life, in which he spent some time with them, but then eventually ascended into heaven, the Lord over all God's creation. And from there he reigns, and as part of that reign he sends us the Holy Spirit to further sanctify, to make holy God's people, to refine, uh, to bless, to help, and he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. Jesus, the process of purifying my soul and your soul took the grace of God and Jesus Christ, his ministry, his death, his life, his sending us the Spirit, his bringing us the Word even today, his gathering us into the household of faith, his walking with us throughout life, his constant work in us. It's awesome the process that Jesus goes through to purify you and me. And in Christ, it works. It works. There's another place in First Peter when the the apostle looks to the people of God. This is how he describes, and it, I pray this is not lost on any of us. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a kind of Malachi. You are a holy nation. I think, are you sure you got that right, Lord? Because I'm a sinner and I struggle with sin and temptation all my life. And yet here you call me a holy nation? Well, he's talking to me and Jesus, my Savior and Lord. And the praise goes to him always. And in the last book of the scriptures, in the fifth chapter, John brings praise to the Lamb of God and says, because you were slain with your blood, that's the process of purifying spiritually. Uh, it isn't chemicals with silver. It's the Savior and his blood. With his blood you purchased for God members of every tribe and language and people and nation. You've made them to be a kingdom and priests, Malachi's, to serve our God. You've made me a priest to serve my God. And Paul in Romans 12 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, offer yourselves a living sacrifice to God. So, okay, I bring my sacrifice of my life to God. I say, here it is, Lord. Here it is. I give to you my life. I give to you my day today. I give to you the week ahead. I give to you all the years that you may give to me. They are yours So, that's kind of a long answer to the question, where is the God of justice? I guess we could say he's a patient God of justice that, praise God, he doesn't come first without bringing a time of preparation. Praise God for John. Praise God for these days where I can hear the good news of the gospel and put my faith in Jesus Christ for these days when I can live my life as a living sacrifice to God in all the ways that that should be done. And uh, brothers and sisters, when we uh, go and seek to serve and be a Malachi in our world, 
there's struggles, and I know there are struggles, and I know there in my own life struggles, even struggles with sin and temptation. Let me share with you something that I, I had reinforced in my life, how so often I think of uh, doing good and bring, bringing praise to God as things I do. Um, I try to, you know, serve in a faithful way or help. And um, it was just reinforced this past week too. It isn't always what we do. Sometimes it's what we don't do. If you have a temptation you're struggling with and you choose not to follow the tempter, that brings praise to God too. And in that case, you can say what I didn't do brought praise to God. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, we praise you that before Jesus comes again, there is a season, a time under heaven for the ministry of Jesus to be prepared for and received. Because if those two things did not happen, as sinners we'd be in real trouble when Jesus comes again to judge the living and the dead. But instead, you call your people to turn to you and you sent Jesus into this world. And Lord, we look to him today and we marvel at the process that purifies us from all our sins, the process of his death on the cross, uh, the process of his continued walking with us in life in uh, bringing us uh, the word and the spirit and the fighting of temptations. We seek to do your will, Lord, but we also seek to avoid sin and bless us each day of our life. May each day show that we are Malachi's, giving our offering to you, the offering of our life. And in Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus, let's stand and we'll sing together. Um, the song is the song Amazing Grace, and we think back to that a purifying way that God has with us, his people. Amazing grace, my chains are gone.
Praise God for his amazing grace. And let's say our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Go out with the blessing of God. May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you. May the Lord give you his peace. Amen. And our closing hymn is To God Be the Glory. Thank you.